All of the pictures in this video are edited with my Night Lights Lightroom preset, which are available on my website, and the link is in the description down below. So I'm gonna show you these pictures and the way that I work. So these are office interiors that I'm shooting or building interiors. Sometimes I look through cafes or I look through windows of different buildings at nighttime. And this is the style that I seem to be developing. And what I wanted to stress to all of you is that you should shoot what feels instinctive to you, what starts to appeal to you, what you like, what attracts you and what gets your attention in the first place. I know typically street photography is pictures of people walking along, you know, looking at their phones and blah, 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 that kind of thing. But it doesn't interest me at all. And so I'm just shooting the stuff that is drawing my attention. And I love these interiors. And if I can get people in the pictures as well, then that's great. But I'm not obsessed or always interested in having people there, but sometimes it works well to have that. I just find like this shot, for example, being able to see inside, seeing the really nice interiors and having just the dishwasher open like that, I thought was kind of amusing. Sometimes I'm taking pictures like this where it's just the light that attracts me. And I'm always attracted to different lightings and moods that different environments give. Um, when I incorporate people, it's when it fits and when it seems to suit. But these structures, I find them kind of fascinating because they look like they're beyond just serving a purpose. And the lighting I find is so kind of crazy in a lot of these places that I can't help but take pictures of them. This, to me, looks a bit more like what the future was supposed to look like when I was a child, um, with the way the lighting is and so on. And I, I find it kind of endlessly fascinating. I could walk around and shoot these sorts of scenes and these settings, I think pretty much every day, constantly. And I'm visiting a lot of the same places because I'm often aware that I want to shoot these things in different ways. So even in this picture, having that old church in the background, you see that? That's what catches my eyes here. This building on the left with these crazy bars and the lights that are, why are they even putting lights there? Probably because it looks interesting. I'm looking at these things all the time and they just grab my attention so much, like this massive metal diagonal beam. And then this crazy lighting, which must take so long to set up. Then there's no one there which I find fascinating because this is an evening. This is like a Wednesday or Thursday evening in central, well, it's not central, I suppose it's technically central London, yes. But there's no one there. Who's it set up for when it's like that? So you'll see sometimes like here, I'm gonna include some people in the next shot. So I include people when they're relevant, but they're not my main subject. I liked here on the right-hand side, you can see the, the silhouette of someone being painted against the, the column there. And Escalades is an ongoing thing for me because they're lit up like this with these like light bars going down the sides of them and so on. I find this kind of interesting, but I was going to start talking a little bit about the, the camera as well, because this is the Olympus EP3 with the 17 millimeter 1.8. I hope I got that right. That's what I think I'm shooting with, <laughs> right? Um, and it's really good little camera especially for this kind of thing as a professional photographer it's really great to be able to walk around with such a small camera i just want to mention this picture i love this staircase in this place i keep shooting this restaurant in different ways uh, and just slightly different compositions because i like it so much and but using this camera is such a break from doing sort of professional kind of photography work being able to feel a bit more like a tourist um it's not about being inconspicuous and not being seen. It's, it's more about just not having to lug around a ton of gear. Again, this shot here, this is all about like, none of the lighting goes together. Like nobody's thought about what they're doing here because the lighting's all over the place, but I love it because of that. I think it works. I think it makes it kind of really interesting. And so shooting with this, this gives me a 35 millimeter equivalent on full frame field of view. And I noticed I was making mistakes and uh, I'm gonna make one here which I haven't got the shot of this place. I keep trying to photograph this place and I haven't got a picture that I'm really happy with here. What should I do with the camera? I just tilt, tilt it down slightly for some reason. I don't know why and I've chopped off these petals. And the thing with this, this location is that there's the plants are there and the lights are meant to represent the petals. And I just keep messing up the composition on it. I think I'm used to the 24 and 50 millimeter focal length much more than I am the 35. And with the 35, equivalent. I, I seem to be trying to shoot it as if it's a 24. 
So I'm often finding myself too close um, and just getting my framing wrong at the moment. But I particularly like it for this kind of photography. Um, I just need to adapt to it a bit better. With the camera itself, the EP3, oh, it performs so well for this kind of stuff. And the files that come out of it have this, when you edit them, uh, they get this, just this grungy look and it's not technically all that great. Um, you know, if you were to zoom in, you'd see a lot of noise and stuff. I love it. I think that all adds to it for me. It's sort of the beauty of imperfection with this camera. And it would, it's really up there with my top choices for this kind of photography. Wow. It's so nice to use. It's so small and light and compact. And just the tone, tonal range that it gives on these Olympus cameras. I think it's beautiful. It's not technically great, but it looks so painterly. So you see me use this, uh, some people in this picture. This was such a weird thing. This is like 9 p.m. Why are these guys carrying this here? And I thought I'm going to time this so they carry that bar and then lit up the handrail would be beneath it, and that's what you see there. Because this is just a weird scene, especially in London. This is a very unusual thing to see, especially at night time. In the daytime, it wouldn't raise that many eyebrows, but this is really peculiar. I had to get this and what I like in these is you see on the right hand side there everything's got neon lights and is lit so I'm at ISO 800 in this video and I'm at 1.8 this is me on the escalators again <laughs> and the only thing I change is at shutter speed and most of the time it's at a 50th of a second I'm not really changing it I'm just kind of shoot, just setting it manually and shooting because you notice that the brightness level of everything is pretty much the same that seems to be sort of running theme with this stuff so it always seems to be the same these lights i've got to get a decent picture of this i'm not sure if this is it yet but these circular lights maybe this is it i like this one i think it looks like someone's going to be beamed in or teleported and then it turns out it's probably only a security guard <laughs> or a receptionist <laughs> doesn't it look like one of those teleports or sort of things i think that's crazy uh, i find these interiors so interesting for me this is so much more interesting than you know, someone's sat drinking a coffee or, or talking on the phone. It just depends what you want. And I guess that's the gist of one of the things I want to get across in this video is to shoot what interests you and stop giving a damn whether other people like it or not, or what they think of it. Just, just shoot the things that you like. And so doing these kind of interiors, like this is a bar here. I think I'm developing my own little style already with the street photography. Street photography isn't something that I consider myself good at. I don't even know if this really qualifies as street photography. I've done it again here. You see, I've chopped off the top of it. This is because I'm used to shooting 24 millimeters and I'm used to being able to recompose a bit and I'm making this mistake. So I'm still getting used more. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with a 35 millimeter equivalent focal length, but I do seem to be making a fair number of mistakes. I'm noticing that still. And I don't care because I really enjoy doing these shoots. And even if I shoot some of the lo same locations when I go out, it's because I want to do them better. I want to do them justice. And I really like this picture because it sets off this little bar into the background. And I think it gives a really good overall feeling. So remember, you should check out my Lightroom presets. It'll link in the description. All of the pictures here are edited with them. And all you need to do is apply the preset. There's two presets, night lights and night dark in the night lights pack. And the night light is the one I use for almost all of the pictures here. They're not expensive and they're pretty straightforward. You'll need Lightroom CC for it, probably an up-to-date version. And the only things I adjust on it are the exposure, the white balance, and which you might need to adjust quite a bit on certain pictures, change the contrast. I use the dehaze slider. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Take care and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.